Good morning. Hi, and welcome. This is Krishna Palani Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, the 4th of March, 2023. And we have with us today a very special guest, a little bit different than we usually have. We have uh, our very new and dear friend, Peter Dennis, with us from just above Toronto, Canada. Uh, he is a hypnotherapist as well. Is, is that correct? You're a hypnotherapist or would you describe yeah, yourself as Okay, yes. hypnotherapist. He's, had, he's worn many hats in his life now or one of his many things is he facilitates training channelers helping them to clearly access that which they are channeling and to eliminate any blocks that they would have and to give them community as well as encouragement to really access what they're doing and since so many people in this group Ukulo, within our room but also people watching our channelers aspiring channelers interested in channeling thought it would be a very beautiful conversation to have where people can ask you questions uh, after we do a little bit of an interview about any of the the things that they're they're facing as channelers so what we do first is we start with some opening prayers and blessings and then uh, if angie has an announcement we'll do that and then we'll come back to you is that okay Perfect. Yeah. So to, today we have in the room, we have myself, Krishna Priya, Angie, Peter, Safira, Anne, Barbara, Kat, Ian, Joan, Joanna, Radha, uh, Selesh, and Wendy. So we have 13 in the room. We've got uh, people on YouTube and we'll be taking your questions. Angie will be watching the YouTube chat. So yeah, we'll take it from there. So who, who do I have that wants to do a blessing? Barbara? Who else? Uh, Wendy? Anyone else want to do a blessing? Ange? Okay, great. Okay. We usually do blessings in light language. So if you're familiar with that, we'll do, we'll start. Let's start with Barbara since she's first. We'll do Wendy, then Angie. And Angie, then if you have any announcements, you can do those. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Barbara. Suzanne just came in. Namaste. Wendy. Yes, good morning, everybody. Ko anara tahira tu ko uye shaka hiana mama tu huira nara ka ira tu uye shikiri ara mara tahira nara huira nara ka turani ara tahi ko anara taha ishkiri ana ha pahira pahui ni i kahira pahu ishkiri ama paha ta tu huira ta ki itu tu huira mara ta. Beautiful. Thank you. Blessings. Thank you. It has to do with um, giving you guidance and support and uh, letting you know that your teams are always with you to support you. Blessings. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Angie. Thank you. Thank you. Um, in regards to announcements, uh, what we have is Jim and I are talking and um, discussing a workshop for uh, this year, closer to the end of the year, like um, around August, end of August-ish. Um, nothing is really finalized yet, but we are in the midst of discussing that right now. Uh, also, if you are interested in any of the online classes, um, email classes at hugolo.org and we will get the information out when we um, have scheduled the next class. Yeah. Yeah. Then when, yeah, we have to pick dates, don't we? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Uh -huh. <laughs> we some classes Angie and I want to do together. We haven't, uh, we haven't yes. dated them yet. Yes. So right. no problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Perfect. So thank you, everybody. Let me just, I, uh, can I ask everyone to turn off their camera just for a moment? Kat, can you turn your camera off? Or I'll turn it off for you. All right. There. <laughs> there we go. So, Peter, 
Uh, welcome. Thank you for being here today. It's really nice to have had a pre-chat with you. So now I, I'm glad we get to uh, chat with you in front of uh, in front of the audience, so they can um, also hear. I just just as we got started, we had a few more people come in. Uh, we had Joan come in. We had Brayden come in. Um, I think that. Yeah, we had th three people. Suzanne came in, so welcome to you all. And please, everyone, keep your mics muted, except for Safira. I'm going to mute you. Okay. Um, yeah, and Safira came in as well. So, all right, Peter, welcome. Thank you. you? Thank you very yeah. much. So, why don't you start with an introduction? I gave like the the briefest introduction uh, for you, but why don't you give an introduction to you know how you sort of got into all of this and what it is you're doing and a little bit of your own history. That would be perfect. Okay, thank you. Actually, you captured it very nicely before. I thought, yeah, that's recorded. I'm going to use it. It is, it is a <laughs> recording. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Well, I, I've had a career in uh, human resources management uh, for nearly 40 years and uh, have an MBA and uh, probably a rather unlikely type to be involved in channeling and uh, spiritual pursuits. But um, I've always had an interest in metaphysics. And uh, years and years ago, I read the Seth material and uh, I guess um, lots of books around that at that time. Um, it was 19, well, actually, I retired from having learned a living in 2008 and wanted to, um, I, I guess, uh, keep active in uh, uh, assisting people to grow and develop. Uh, as an HR person, I used to do a lot of training. And uh, one of the uh, training programs that we used to use quite a bit was uh, goal setting, goal achieving. And I always thought that uh, if we could unleash the unconscious mind towards the, the, the achievement of goals, we really had something very powerful operating. So I took a course in hypnosis and uh, became a certified consulting hypnotist or a hypnotherapist. Did that for a few years. And uh, I guess I began to get a lot of people coming for spiritual things, you know, life purpose, uh, past life regression, that kind of thing. And I found in the course of doing past lives, there were three clients who reported lives on other planets. And uh, that really caught my attention. I had no idea that souls could <laughs> incarnate in other realms or anything like that. Um, anyway, I called a few of my former clients back and said, look, um, you've gone through regression before with me. I have a feeling you're a, a very good subject for hypnosis and you probably won't be spooked too much if you find out that you were an ET on some other planet. So um, now I invited 13 of them to come and uh, kind of research this a little with me. Uh, six of them showed up, but all five of them began channeling. Uh, Karen Ashby was the first and uh, it was kind of funny. We went back uh, in time and I said, what are you doing? And she says, I'm on my spaceship. And um, well, what are you doing there? Uh, I'm monitoring Earth. Uh, why would you be doing that? And uh, pretty soon uh, the conversation began to shift a little to we. And uh, suddenly the lights went on in my mind. And I said, wait a minute, we're channeling here, aren't we? <clears throat> and uh, she said, yes, we are. I said, well, who are you? And we're the Palladians. And uh, so from there, that was July of 2018. And uh, Karen was the first, but since then there have been 70 now who I've been working with. 11 were already channeling before I met them, but the other 59 were people who wanted to become channelers. And um, hypnosis has been a handy tool to uh, help in that regard. So here we are today and um, yeah, very pleased to be here. Thank you very much, Krishna. Oh, well, thank you so much. And and you know, one of my questions to you was, do you channel? And you responded. <laughs> I've uh, wanted to channel for quite a while, and uh, but I've had various conversations with various beings about this. And it's been made pretty clear to me that if I got to channel, I'd probably put on my old corporate hat and start uh, taking it out with a marketing plan and uh, 
you know, I'd be spending all my time doing that. And really my mission in this life is to assist others to become channelers, to help uh, those who are already channelers to develop their talent and maybe take it to the public. And thirdly, to disseminate information. You know, right. to date I've had probably five or 600 recorded conversations with various beings and I've accumulated a lot of information. So I, I did put out a book after the first five channelers and um, I'm writing articles now for my newsletter that uh, is really a product of what I'm learning. Mm. So I'm, I don't have time for channeling, I guess that's <laughs> one way to put it. Well, this. everyone, I mean, everyone is, has a, a, a place in this puzzle and not everyone is the mouthpiece of the information. Some people are, you know, like you're facilitating the those that bring information and that's just as important. You have to have a foundation to stand on and st the support and the confidence and that has to be nurtured somewhere and in some way, I, I would assume, I, I would think so. And it seems that you've really found um, a way to do that and, and that's just a beautiful and genuine calling in and of itself. And there's no, you know, there's not like, I'm a, it shouldn't be, oh, he's not a channel. I am a channel. It should be, you know, how is, how is this all working together? You know, you can't have, you know, you can't have a car without wheels. You can't, or you can, but it doesn't go anywhere. So, you know, there's all of that. So that's actually quite interesting because we don't really, you know, everyone now that, especially in this group, most people want to be channels, which is perfectly great. That's why they're coming here. But you have to think about in the lead up to that, how do you get there? How do you develop that? How do you grow that? And that's, I guess, where you're coming in. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> I think so. uh, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, many people have a question is, uh, can I channel? And uh, that is not so much the question. Um, I think almost anybody can channel. Uh, the question is, are you ready for channeling? Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes there has to be some clearing to be done or trauma to overcome and things like that. But yeah, um, yeah most people are capable. And, uh... Yeah. So what are the, I mean, before we get into the process of how you, because that's what I think would be interesting for everyone of how you work with people. And then, of course, I'm sure everyone will have questions for you. But what is the, what are sort of the highlights of the things that you've learned, maybe some things that you've known in the metaphysical world. And metaphysics, metaphysics has expanded, I would say, since the early 70s. It's gotten a lot more, it went from metaphysics sort of to new age, and now it's gone to sort of this spiritual community. But what are the things that you have taken in or learned that say you didn't know, um, other than the fact that like, someone could be a, a living on a planet, being on a ship, what are some of the things that opened your eyes to uh, what's going on in the universe that would be something that you would, key takeaways, I guess, would be the best way to ask that. Yeah, yeah, that is a good question. Maybe number one is the unity of everything. We're, we are all one. And, uh, you know, we say that and intellectually we can possibly get our minds around it, but it sinks into different levels, I think, at different times. And uh, I'm getting that more and more. I'm seeing it more and more in others. Um, you know, I've had conversations with trees, rocks, you know, the spirits of lots of things, dragons. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's maybe the, um, the overriding thing, actually, that uh, we are indeed all one. Right, uh, the divine right. realm that uh, Terry uh, Rainier channels uh, pointed out. Just, just for that. people that, just for people who've been uh, coming to Human Colony, she's been on a couple times. She's a lovely, lovely mm -hmm. friend of mine, Terry Rainier. She channels the um, the divine realm. So just to let people know, she's been on, and you can look up her uh, channelings that she has in our in our library here on Hugo TV. But please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just going to say the divine realm gave me a, a really good metaphor to understand the oneness of everything. And uh, I've had a few others since, but uh, uh, that's maybe, that's maybe number one. Mm. And after that, uh, maybe, 
that were not limited. That were not what? Limited. You know, limitation. Limitation. Is our yeah. natural, or is unnatural to us. Mm. And um, that is starting to sink in. You know, our level of consciousness in 3D is pretty limited. There's a lot of things we just can't get our minds around. Right. Um, I have a friend, um, his name is Ricardo Martinez, and uh, he's a fifth dimension individual. He still has a body because he's still dealing with some 3D issues. But um, I guess uh, I asked him one time, uh, what's it like when you kind of go off into the higher dimensions and deal with some of the beings that you find there? And he said, Peter, there's no language for it. He said, it's like you're trying to explain to an ant how to program a computer. He said, I just can't explain to you what it's like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, there, it's true because there's so many things that we ask, you know, about where that are indes, they're indescript, and and that's where, like in meditation, you have the experience of something, but in, it's like I can describe chocolate cake all day long, and and tell you it's moist and it's chocolatey and it's, but if you've never had chocolate and you never had cake, and it's just in, in, almost impossible, and I can tell you how, you know, it makes me feel, and, and but you just you can imagine sort of but you really can't get it until you actually have the actual experience. And mm -hmm. I think we, we ask, we ask different beings to tell us where they are, what they're doing. And we, our frame of reference is they're in a house somewhere that's material and they have, you know, maybe fashion icons, you know, where they have their own version of the Kardashians or something like that. And, <laughs> and those things are maybe not even within their, scope or they may be very much but in a totally different way so it's it's very hard to put words it's like describing a color that no one has seen mm -hmm. you know it's very hard to do that yeah well, some of these beings have limitations too uh sure. they, they don't have the vocabulary to explain certain things and mm -hmm. they uh, you know i've asked questions uh, and they say i just don't have access to that information mm -hmm. <laughs> you know uh and the Palladians are very quick to point out that they're not always right. You know, they say we know a little more than you do, but, um, you know, be discerning and, uh, you know, take our input, but evaluate it and come to your own conclusions. Sure. Has there been anything that you've encountered with all the different channelers over the many years? And especially I'm interested in the ones that uh, were in, under hypnosis and had no, uh, you know, Pre, pre information that they were going to go into that state. Was there anything you've learned that was surprising in a sort of way where you're like, ah, I don't know, I don't, I don't trust it, I don't like it. Is there any of that? I don't think Are so. Yeah. Um, no, I, actually, uh, one thing that uh, I've started is that um, there are a group of channelers, and I think there's about eight of them who all want to be facilitators. And uh, this isn't rocket science. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, you know, I get people into a relaxed state. We call it hypnosis. But a guided mm -hmm. meditation would get them into the same state mm -hmm. uh, where they're just open a little right. more, a little right. more relaxed. And if the beings are there, they, they will come through. Uh, sometimes we have to kind of tease them through a little bit. But uh, you know, get yeah. the ego aside or whatever. Yeah. And do you find that most of the ones that come through are are positive? Are there any that are really sort of very ego driven, or are they most of them have sort of a higher consciousness? You know, I've had two cases of uh, where beings have come through who are just simply curious. Mm. And they were very honest. Um, I asked yeah. them, uh, why are you here? And so, well, you know, there was this opening and we dropped in to see what was going on. <laughs> and I said, are you here to help? And not particularly. Well, then would you please leave? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so they just kind uh, of were peeking through an open window, basically. In a way, yes. Now, we do uh, set up some protection. Uh, yeah. We ask Archangel Michael to stand by and ensure it's only beings of the light. And I asked Michael afterwards, what's going on with these characters? And uh, he said, oh, they were just kind of immature and they <laughs> were poking around. Uh, he said, no harm done. And, uh, you know, but uh, I have never had any dark experiences. Right. 
good. No, well, I mean, I, I, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't interrupt you. No, I was just going to say, you know, we've all heard of people maybe that have had such, but um, they're probably exaggerated, and uh, and I think you can avoid them. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I once I had an experience in meditation actually, where I was shown some quite dark beings, and they were down a hallway, kind of you know in my in my consciousness, and I was told they're there, you know, but you don't have to play with them. And it was very very street, you know. They kind of looked at me. They're like, "Sup? You know, what's up?" But it was none of this that, that I needed to, you know. Don't go playing in a bad neighborhood. You don't need to go play in, in places you don't want to be, but you can know that things are real and exist without having to dive into it or open it up or invite them in. Yeah. You know, I mean, they'd come if you wanted them to, but it's probably not a good idea only for the sake of, it's not going to uh, really help you to get closer to yourself. It's going to distract you and it'll be so ego that you won't even yeah. <laughs> know what to do. It'll be all fear and, you know, yeah, well, we always problems. specify beings of the light, fifth mm -hmm. dimension and up, but not too far up because the human vibration has to rise and the beings have to lower theirs. And, uh, you know, most people don't start off with ascended masters or uh, vibrational beings beyond that, but, um, you know, a higher self, a guide, a Palladian, those kind of beings. And then, um, Archangel Michael has been with us quite a bit. Yeah, he's a good one too. That's exactly who uh, I instruct people to call upon because he's he's definitely able to act as a gatekeeper and to keep everything mm -hmm. sort of in alignment. And when it's not, he's able to just uh, disperse uh, energy as it needs to yeah. be dispersed. Yeah. So we do have some questions. Or was there anything mm -hmm. that I that you wanted to address before we go into some questions? With people, I did want to ask a little bit before we do that. I actually, I, I want to ask, what is your process and how you, you know, I come to you and I say, hey, Peter, um, I, I want to channel. What do I do? How do I start? How do I begin? Well, there's really two parts to it, I think. Uh, one, as a hypnotist, I have an intake. You know, if you came to me for weight loss or smoking cessation, I would have a number of questions for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I go through many of those just to qualify you and to impart to you some information about what hypnosis is like, mm -hmm. uh, dispelling certain rumors and that kind of thing, or myths. Um, but after that sort of intake, I guess I'm always curious about what brought you here mm -hmm. and uh, why do you think this is the right thing for you? And uh, usually I get a sense pretty quickly as to whether this is going to work or not. And in almost every case it is, it seems that people kind of self-qualify, you might say. Um, you know, for one thing, I charge them money for the first uh, couple of kicks at the tires. Um, after I wrote the book, I got a lot of people calling up and saying, I'd like to try it, I'd like to try it. Said, Wait a minute, this is taking a lot of my time. So, um, you know, you're gonna pay for the first two and after that, if you're a channeler, and I know that you are, then I'll give you some more sessions and we'll work together. But um, I guess the, the process really, uh, once we say, okay, let's do it, um, I go through, um, if they're with me, which uh, since COVID, uh, none really have been, but the first 16 were always with me and I would uh, use a rather quick hypnotic induction to get them into that state. Now that it's over Zoom, it takes a little longer, but it's really pretty much like a guided meditation. Mm -hmm. And they get into a nice mellow state and I can usually conduct a little test as to whether they're there or not. Uh, give them a suggestion and see if they act on it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the old hypnosis thing of join your hands and you can't pull them apart. I'm going to count to three and you'll try and you just won't be able to, that kind of thing. So yeah. I'll, I'll know if they're there or not uh, pretty quickly. Uh, once they're there, um, we say, oh, we're going to ask the ego to stand aside. That um, we want the ego to understand that everything is safe. The ego is safe. The channeler or the 
client is yeah. safe. Yeah. And uh, but you just go be the observer and sit in the corner somewhere and just watch this, and that'll be the best thing you can do to help. Uh, we ask that a beam of the light come, ID and up, ideally with um, some experience channeling before with humans, ideally with some knowledge of the English language. Right. Not necessarily, but ideally. Ideally, some familiarity with the human brain. And um, then we ask Archangel Michael to stand by and ensure that it's only beings of the light. And then we usually just wait. And um, I have to observe. Uh, sometimes I see eyes fluttering. I see twitches. I see things moving. I will ask the client, um, are you experiencing any sensations? And if yes, maybe focus on them. See if you can amplify them. See if they mean anything to you. Mm. Um, uh, it's all over the map as to what happens then. I, I think Kate Woodley has the record, and she doesn't mind me saying this, uh, 42 minutes before anything much happens. <laughs> she, <laughs> she was twitching a little. Her body would jump every once in a while. Right. Uh, it tells me her left hand still does a little of that. But um, there comes a point where nothing much is happening. So I might do something like ask the client, I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions and I want you to give me answers. And they don't have to be the right answers, just any answer. First thing that pops into your head, just immediately say it. So I will go through things like, is there a being there? Yes or no. Is this being wanting to channel? Yes or no. Are you of the light? Yes or no. And then I might open it up a little bit. Uh, where are you from? Uh, right. So that's more than yes or no. And right. um, so there's often a point at which it begins to signal to me, this isn't the client talking anymore. Right. Um, right. Now, uh, there are others who um, I can think of Michelin Walt and um, she, <laughs> I, I guess um, I just got her into a hypnotic state and wham, in came Fiona. And she, the first words out of her mouth were, what took you so long? <laughs> um, so it was, waiting. It was almost instant. So that's interesting. There's a big range. Do you do you find that? Uh, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the spiritualist churches in the UK um, and their their mediumship um, uh, training that they do and and the way they facilitate in the spiritualist churches. They do a lot of demonstrations of mediumship, connecting with people you know on the other side, dead relatives. But they also do trans channeling, but, but it's, it's the old style of trans channeling, really deep, deep, um, cha deep, uh, deep meditation and no memory after and medit mm -hmm. and channeling has really evolved now where people are conscious channels where they, before they, you know, had no memory. Do you find, I have two questions. Do you find that, uh, do you have one, do you have familiarity with that style of, of mediumship, the spiritualist church? Um, I'm aware they exist. I don't know really anything about them. I yeah. do know uh, the first channeler I met was Ann Morris, and uh, she uh, is unconscious through this, mm -hmm. but she wasn't initially. Mm -hmm. She said after a couple of years, she just kept getting the same questions all the time, you know, my career, my health, my relationship. Yeah. <laughs> she said yeah. five or six questions, and she said, I'm just bored, so I check out. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know where she goes, but... Like uh, Daryl Anka, nice. the first words out of her mouth after a session is, how did it go? Uh, yeah. She has a clue. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but I agree that uh, today there is more of the, um, you might say, sort of a lighter state. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are aware. Uh, most of the people I work with are quite aware of uh, what's going on. Some are a little fuzzy on it. but uh, Right. We record everything, so they yeah. go back. And then the other question was, have you, have you, did you, have you found in your sessions that uh, people are channeling uh, 
sort of dead relatives or dead people as opposed to say a a being and are the beings that there is is there sort of some that are you know they and is anyone channeling their grandmother or or someone like that or is it mo mostly that they're ch channeling a being of sort of a higher consciousness that's either it's incarnate now yeah yeah it's always been the latter uh there has never been uh an instance of mediumship or um you know, a recently passed over relative. Um, mm -hmm. I think the closest to that would be a higher self. Right. Um, but um, no. <laughs> <That's simple laughs> <answer. laughs> no, that's no, that's a good. It was just a question that I had. I, I just wondered if, mm. you know, Hugh had run into uh, different because I, the reason I asked that is one of the things I told you is my, my teacher, uh, Caroline Hart, who was also a hypnotherapist, one of the things she dealt with a lot was spirit attachment. And it, usually it was, you know, sometimes it was a relative that didn't want to leave or, or, um, you know, for some reason I drifted by and attached. And it was usually an, an, a disincarnate spirit that needed to really go to the light. And so there was a lot of yeah. that that she ran into. And I don't know if you had run into any of that as well. I know, I know people who uh, call themselves rescuers and, uh, you know, they get those ghosts, I guess, to go yeah. to the light. Yeah. Um, and I would say that some of the uh, people who have become channelers um, started out as mediums. Yeah. I'm, I was a medium first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if one leads to the other or if the other can lead to the one. Um, you know, I, I guess they're just two separate things, but there's a bit of overlap, of course. I think there's a door, you know, between the two. And I, yeah. I it's, it's more about just being open to the to the energy, I guess. But channeling is a channeling is really stepping out of the way. It's really mm -hmm. saying, hi, you know, use my mouth, use my voice, use my voice and and. Whereas mediumship is more of like you're describing what you're experiencing and then you're actually connecting to an energy that has, you know, a personality that probably has had a, a life, um, you know, re and, and usually it's more, it, well, maybe it's just the clientele that I've had that are more recently departed. You know, it's, it's the people mm -hmm. looking for the peace uh, the clients are usually the people looking for the peace and finding that sort of peace in letting go of that that person that has passed on and just understanding that they're okay, that they're still life after death. You know, the 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 mission of a channeler is very clear. It's it's to give evidence of life after death and to give comfort to the living. And and that and that's generally, you know, the messages from your your grandmother, your father, your brother, husband, whatever are, are really, I love you and I'm okay. And, yeah. you know, we'll, you know, we'll meet again. And those are, you know, there's other very pertinent stuff that comes through, but for the most part, that's what you're there to convey and to convey it in such a way that is true to who that person uh, was so that mm -hmm. it's very clear that they're getting the message from them. They'll you, usually, and it's very evidence-based in the effect of like, you give uh, how they died, you give uh, something that is very particular to them that would be very known by the person. Like, I don't need to know if what it means, but it's just showing that evidence of they're, they're, they're talking about this. This is something that you did. And they'll go, yes, that's something we did all the time. So that it's, it's really clear that it's that person, but it really has, it's not channeled messages generally of higher knowledge. It's really, I love you. You know, I'm, I'm okay. And then giving the evidence that you really aren't connected to that that's yes mm. that's my understanding as well yeah the closest that we come to it is sometimes we'll ask a channel being how's old uncle harry doing yeah um, you know i have a couple of grand dogs and one passed a while ago and then we oh. asked how's moose doing they said oh he hasn't yeah. left yet he's still hanging around he loved it <laughs> he was. yeah um, so the, the animals do being, come around yeah yeah the channel yeah. beings will uh answer specific questions uh, on mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's a it's a different uh, approach right right okay so if if we're if it's okay can we open up some for some questions i yeah. joan and and brayden had a question but i think that we answer them their question was brayden said i don't know how to channel can you give some tips on channeling um i i think you addressed that but if you want to address that more you you're welcome to 
Yeah. Um, well, I think the, the routine that I describe that I use, uh, you can do that pretty much yourself. Get into a deep meditation or meditative state and just invite beings of the light. Uh, set up whatever protections you like. And, and the protection thing I'm beginning to learn is uh, sometimes a little overworked. You know, the universe understands that you set it up once that you want it every time. So sort of you don't have to <laughs> keep right. repeating it. Right. Um, but uh, do whatever is comfortable for you and uh, get nice and comfortable with it. You might run a recorder at the same time if you like. And uh, just sit back and um, if you feel sensations in your hands or your chest or your head or whatever, focus on them. Maybe ask a question, is this a being? Would this being like the channel? If so, just come on through. Um, you can play with that uh, and uh, maybe bring a sense of play. Don't, don't get too serious about it. Uh, these beings, yeah, some of them don't have the wide range of emotions and humor that we do, but uh, some of them can be pretty funny too. Yeah. Do you, do you find just in that, uh, do you find that people when they're channeling, are they channeling aspects of themselves, whether it's themselves in, as in, in another life or, or, you know, their past, present or future self or their higher self, or are they in some way connected or do you find that people are, because I, that's what I found. I, I, I feel that it's always someone that is part of their sort of soul group, part of their, for the, their yeah. oversoul. Do you it's a, you know, it seems to be a range where, uh, yes, some definitely, like uh, Daryl Lank is, uh, or I guess Bashar is a future version of Daryl Lanka. Right, right. Um, as I understand it. Um, there is some of that, but there is some that, um, you know, have channeled a couple of angels who said, oh, they've never been with this person before, don't intend to again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, once is enough yeah yeah um, no i think it uh, it varies quite a bit um mm. yeah some uh yeah they, they've been with them for many lifetimes and uh, this right. is maybe a culmination of a lot of things um it may be just a step to greater things later mm. perfect Okay, and then Joan had a question. And it's, it's not one question, it's many, but I think you also addressed <laughs> some of these. She said, uh, what is channeling for you? Um, how do you channel? Which I, I think she's, but he he doesn't actually channel like we were channeling, but, um, and then she says, uh, is our, oh, she says, are all channels delivering truth? That's a very good question. Are all of yeah. them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. What was the second one? I sort of latched on. So the, for the first question was, what is channeling for you? What do well, you, how do you, what uh, does yes. it mean for you? Hmm. Well, um, I am not a channeler like the others. I don't orally um, verbalize messages from other beings. Uh, but um, I wrote a book about channeling, and it took me eight days to do the first draft. And somebody asked if it was channeled. I said, well, I don't think so. I think it's my own thoughts. But then, wait a minute, eight days. <laughs> you know, that's ridiculous. Um, and later, I was told, yes, it was channeled. Um, so it's kind of subtle. Uh, I'm sure there are times, like maybe right now, you ask me a question, and uh, I'm maybe eliciting some help here uh, to, to provide an answer. So I think I channel in some ways that are rather subtle, but uh, certainly not like the clients I work with. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, uh, that's an important point. Yeah, yeah. The uh, idea of truth. Um, I think the truth at the third dimension of consciousness is a little different than the truth at the fifth or the seventh or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a little tricky to define exactly what the truth is. You know, Santa Claus is true for a four-year-old. Yes. Um, I would say, though, um, the Palladians have stated quite clearly, um, don't believe everything they tell us. They uh, said, we're somewhat like your parents. Uh, we know more than you do, but we're not always right. So please use your own 
wits and uh, be discerning. So I would say on balance, I've had information that turned out not to be true, but I sometimes pin them down and ask, uh, you know, how much longer is Joe Biden going to be around or something like that? And I'll get an answer and it turns out, well, that answer wasn't quite right, but pretty close. You know, so they see things as probabilities. And uh, if you ask them at a point in time, you will get um, the, how things look and the most probable outcome at that instant in time. But we're in a free will universe and somebody could change their mind and that whole prediction was out the window. Yeah, so that, that's exactly what I have with them, um, with my, my with my psychic ability. When I give people readings, I'm always like, yeah. in this moment, in this time, right now, the highest probability is this. However, you have decision points, and at any moment, it can go like this. And that's not always the most satisfying answer, but it's really the truth, you know, yeah. it, as it stands. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you described exactly the way that I that I get the information, especially when we come to beings and we ask them predictive questions. There's one thing to ask about the truth of things and how they are and how things are structured. It's another thing to come to, you know, a, a being and ask them to predict, which is very mm -hmm. different than usually what they like to do. They like to talk about yeah. what is true, what is eternal, what is always true. And these things of like, when am I going to meet this? How's my business going to go? There's so many factors that are nearly impossible to quantify. And yeah. you you always have choice moments in, 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 in all of those. So I recognize what you're saying. Yeah. Maybe just add to that response. Um, I can't think of an instance where a being just outright lied to me. Mm. You know, I, I think they might say this is how we see things at the moment. And that may turn out to be wrong. But, um, you know, I, I think you're, yeah, you, you put it very nicely, Chris and Priya, that, uh, yeah, they, uh, they're here to tell us the truth, basically. And uh, their messages are uplifting, they're empowering, they're, yeah. you know, it's all good stuff. Yeah, that's true. And and that is actually quite important is that they are empowering and you you have you know people who just want the answer and want to be told what to do and how to do it and and I I always find that most of the beings are trying to empower you to yeah. to take the responsibility and 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 take the risk to take your own action and to own what you're doing and to to do it with consciousness. And that's, you know, that's probably why you get the same questions. Like you're like the one who said she checks out, you know, you do get the same questions constantly. And um, I know for many channelers, it's just, oh, can we, can we have some other questions, you know, but that's, it's funny. There's some beings that um, I usually clarify this with them. You know, is there anything you're unwilling to talk about? Yeah. And Gail Scott channels a group called the Laster. And the first words out of their mouth in any session is, we'll talk about anything except politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And that's their preference. Yeah. Yes, I understand. Um, there's a question uh, from uh, Suzanne. Oh, actually, Ian is first. Why don't we let Ian ask a question? Go ahead, Ian. Hi, Peter. Thanks for being here today. First, um, quickly, is the book that you've written, is it an audible form? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. That's my favorite way of listening of reading a book is through Audible. Yeah. Um, the next next thing is that um, I've read a series of books from um, Dr. Michael Newton, who did the same, who's basically stumbled onto the same thing that you did. Yeah. Um, hypnosis came into past lives, and one of the areas that he focused on, and I'm interested to know if you also had the same experience, and if you explored what happens or what that individual is doing in between lives. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm familiar with his books, uh, Journey of the Soul. Um, yeah, and The Destiny the of the Soul. And, uh, yeah, they're good books. Um, I think the um, experience between lives is quite varied. Uh, some people want to break and they get it. You know, some people want to get right back in the game and they're back quickly. Um, there is, though, I think um, a pattern for everybody that is pretty much what um, 
I think it was Michael that was talking about, uh, there's a debriefing, an evaluation, uh, probably a bit of a break, and uh, then you start and scheme and plot for your next uh, incarnation. Um, I think what uh, maybe he lacks is, um, uh, better be careful how to put this, um, what he doesn't get into, I guess, is uh, souls can incarnate in any, you know, you can be a tree or a dragon, or an ET, and um, I think he uh, keeps his exploration strictly to humans. Um, but I, I haven't found any fault with anything that he's done. It's uh, maybe just not as rich as uh, it could be, but then he's done it from, I think he has an army of graduate students who hypnotize people and document what they say happens between lives. Um, but yeah, generally pretty consistent, I think. Yeah. Okay. And just to follow up on the, like on the tree thing, um, I think it's kind of the, the, the notion that the reincarnation pretty much humans are going to reincarnate into humans or maybe a, you know, extraterrestrial lives, but like, you know, they, humans don't reincarnate into other animals. Are you saying that you have experienced with your hypnosis, with your, with your sessions that yes, humans do reincarnate, whether it be trees or animals? Um, yes. I was surprised to learn this. Um, I had one being tell me, he said, yeah, they do, but it generally isn't a step forward in their evolution. But they might want the experience anyway. Now, I've had a conversation with a rock and um, the spirit of a rock. And um, I, I said, have you ever been human? And he says, oh, yeah. I said, never again. So <laughs> that's rough. <laughs> And, uh, I, and then he said, well, I should maybe never say it never because my higher self may have some other ideas. Um, the higher self has a fair role to play in this. As a matter of fact, the individual uh, soul uh, kind of follows along and may not, you know, have total uh, jurisdiction here. But uh, yes, um, the soul of... Um, a tree, uh, and I've had conversations with them. Uh, I think if some of the recordings on YouTube that Karen Ashby did, I think there's one on the consciousness of trees. And it's fascinating. And, and the trees are really going to be interesting. Uh, there's apparently a, in, uh, in sort of spirit, there is a, a mother tree that has come to earth now. And mm -hmm. there are going to be some seedlings probably in the next three to five years that once they take root, they're going to grow in an accelerated way. Uh, seven to 10 years, we're gonna see trees that today would take 150 years to get that kind of growth. But the planet needs that kind of thing. And um, that mother tree is here to help. Um, mm. So yes, Ian, um, yeah, we do incarnate in the, into rocks and trees and animals, but Generally, uh, we go the other way, you might say, uh, higher vibrational and up. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you very much for your answer. You're welcome. It, it's so interesting. You know, when I, when I was a child, I had a tree that was my friend. And I would sit in the tree and talk to the tree and had very beautiful conversations. And, and, and when I moved to the Netherlands, there were two trees on my street that are my friends. And um, what I what I heard from Theos that they can be a tree, um, but they will just focus their consciousness into it to have that experience and then withdraw it um, as well at a certain period of time. So uh, the other the other but what it came to my to mind is that you know we think about. Um, reincarnation as being sequential, but if really truly all time is now, it's yes, it is uh coincident or co how would you say it? It's because it's um, happening all now, <laughs> it's, simultaneous. It's, it's, it's simultaneous, and so therefore, not only are we probably the tree, we are also you know the being that we are, we can have parallel uh incarnations, multiple incarnations at the same time. And 
one of the other things that comes to mind is because especially when you hear a lot of people channeling, a lot of people channel Archangel Michael, a lot of people channel uh, Mother Mary, and they'll say, well, I was Mother Mary, but everyone, in fact, because we are all a one, we all are Mike, Archangel Michael, we all are Mother Mary. There isn't one person that is only that. We are all yes. that. Truly. Yes. I mean, We're there might be something. Yeah, so we we can have a sort of line of, I, I, I feel that we have a sort of grouping of the beings that we are part of, but then in fact, we are everything. So there isn't any uh, incarnated being that we are not. In truth, in the full truth of oneness, you can't be one and then not be one yes. <laughs> at the same time, right? And then in uh, maybe um, a lower vibrational way of looking at it is we are indeed uh, multidimensional. Uh, I was told by a group, um, an eighth dimensional group, that I was part of that group. And mm. I was asking a question and I said, Peter, you're talking to yourself. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's true. Um, Suzanne has a question. Suzanne, do you want to ask? Do you have a mic or are you do you want to ask your question as opposed to typing it? Can you unmute? Hi. Okay, go ahead. Um, well, I just uh, wondered if you were familiar with Alba Weinman. No. Okay. No. She's a quite wonderful. Uh, she's a hypnotist and she went through the same kind of process I think you did um, in the sense that she started out with regression in the first life and then the past lives kept coming up and then uh, lives on other planets. And so um, she assists her clients with things like past life information that affects them today in this life, mm -hmm. as well as um, asking questions for the clients, as well as uh, removing attachments. When, yeah. uh, when Is this the same kind of thing that you're doing? Um, sometimes I subcontract the releasing of trauma and the healing that's required. Uh, Karen Haywood is really good at that. She's a channeler, but she prefers to be a healer first. Um, there are people who are just better at that. Um, I've done it. And uh, certainly with hypnotherapy, you uh, plan A is to go back and find the cause. And often when the client just recognizes what the root cause is, uh, they let it go almost immediately and spontaneously. But sometimes there's some forgiving to do, some releasing to do, and um, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm not as verse and artful at doing that. Just don't do as much of it. But so I sometimes will refer a client to a really good healer. Um, and Till is, I think, uh, part of the audience here today, and she's one who's a, a really good healer. Uh, so, uh, no, I'm not familiar with uh, your friend, but um, yeah, I'd love to talk with her. You can see how her process, she, she doesn't show how she hypnotizes people, but she has a process on her website, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty extensive. She's been doing this for about five or six years, recording it, posting some parts of the interview on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty easy to find her if you were interested. Anyway, I'm you're you sound very busy anyway, but I just thought I would mention that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, certainly you don't have to be a hypnotist to assist other people to do this. Um, you know, if you can lead them into a guided meditation that will get them into the meditative state and reasonably, they don't have to be all that deep in it either. Um, you know, then uh, you know you can suggests that they allow and open up a little and you know as i said before thank you oh uh, you're welcome to that with with that conversation it it, it made me want to ask you what do you because you talked about forgiveness and I, I i also feel like forgiveness is one of the the biggest things that we have to do to unblock ourselves um to be able to be open to 
so much more. So can you talk a little bit about the importance of forgiveness and sort of letting go of sort of traumas in order to facilitate channeling and how that affects your ability? Mm -hmm. There's probably a lot of people who are more expert about it. Um, but um, yeah, you're right that um, there are certain events that have happened that require forgiveness. And if you can't rise to the occasion, then you're probably blocking your spiritual development, whether channeling is a part of that or not. Um, yeah, and for 3D humans, that's not always easy to do. You know, we've got our baggage and fears and whatnot. And, um, but um, yeah, it is extremely important. And um, we can chip away at it. You know, in hypnosis, I will sometimes ask a person, um, can you forgive that party? And they will hesitate and uh, hem and haw and uh, say, well, can you 50% forgive them? Oh, okay, I can do that. <laughs> So, okay, we're down to 50 now. Um, let's chip away at it some more. Um, do you think you can forgive them a little more? Say, um, you know, another 20%. And we can, you know, get there. Maybe it's another session. Uh, maybe they've got to, you know, think about it a bit more. What's, what's in the way of forgiving? Mm. But, um, yeah. Yeah, very important. And it, uh, it's just a gigantic roadblock if you can't get by it. Yeah. Well, it also informs so much of, especially people that have huge trauma, or, or you can maybe talk about that, people who have huge trauma where, you know, when you identify with that which you've experienced and you uh, make that part of your identity and that defines you, mm -hmm. then you set up these sort of self-limiting beliefs that I can only go this far because of this past and and these, you know, I mean, it's it's not, it doesn't, it's not to say that the trauma is not real. It's absolutely real. But mm -hmm. the identification with yourself as your, as being your body, as I am this person on this planet, as opposed to I am a divine being having a, you know, human experience. And, and when you, when you're so identified with the body, with your, the self, the ego self, mm -hmm. um, then, then it sometimes can be very difficult to open yourself up because you are, you believe that you are only this based on what has happened to you versus who you, who you truly are, which is, you know, even Bashar says, there's only a few things that are true. What is true is that you are eternal and, you know, you, you will, I don't remember what he says, but there, it's basically, you, <laughs> okay, you'll never die. What? Oh, nothing. Well, it's the same thing in Course in Miracles. Nothing that is real can be um, destroyed and nothing that is not real exists and your eternal and your love and all these things. But but those are the but when you identify with anything other than that and you make that your identity, it's very hard to move past no, the it, I ness, the little yeah. I as opposed to the big I. Yeah. yeah. I don't if remember the four things. Look at it from the perspective of your vibration. You know, what is this doing to your vibration? Well, it's obviously it's holding it down. Well, what can you do to turn that around? Is there some little piece of it that you can latch on to that'll make you feel a little better? And if you feel a little better, and then you're starting to raise your vibration a little. And uh, focus on that, try to amplify it, you know, things like that. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that identify with, uh, you know, I'm a victim of whatever. And uh, yeah, as long as you believe that, you're always going to be a victim and you're going to carry the vibration of victimhood. Yes. So um, there's some, Angie, do you have, I saw that there are some questions in the YouTube chat. Do you want to yes. ask them? Okay. Sure. Um, hey, Matt Wally says, I heard earth is a problem solving planet. So it would make sense that other beings could possibly not answer certain things. So. What you yeah, it could be. Um, I've uh, had a couple conversations with Gaia, our mother earth. And uh, the last one, she said she is very happy with the way uh, Ascension is happening. She actually said she's doing a happy dance. <laughs> and I said, well, be careful. You know, we humans might uh, <laughs> get shaken up a little bit by that. But um, um, yeah, she is a, a conscious being. Uh, she is, I guess, uh, 
been encrusted, you might say, in darkness. Uh, Ascended Master Jesus poked a hole in that, and uh, more and more lights coming through all the time. Uh, the kids that are coming in these days are bringing lots of light. Um, the dark is somewhat in retreat, as I understand it. Um, I know I'm getting sidetracked here. Um, did you have a question that you want <laughs> uh, that I think I've probably evaded here? Um. Uh, not really. Basically, what he was saying is um, not not all beings off planet can answer our own our questions because oh. they're not here. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I've certainly had some beings say uh, we just don't know or we don't have access to that information. Right now, there's also um, the element of uh, we are probably better off not knowing the answer. Absolutely. In some cases. Mm -hmm. um, he also has two other questions that I'm going to kind of put together. Mm -hmm. uh, the first question is, what is most exciting for you about doing this process? And then what are your favorite questions that you that you ask? Uh, ask who? Um, when you're doing um, a regression or when you are doing a hypnosis session, what are your favorite questions that you like to ask? Um, well, first of all, the, the biggest kick I get out of it is when there's a breakthrough, when a client comes in who is not channeling consciously and orally and uh, leaves doing that. Um, I think that's the biggest kick for me. Now, whether the client chooses to take that to the public or not is entirely his or her decision. And um, initially, I thought everybody should be out, you know, uh, on a platform uh, disseminating this information. But no, I've learned uh, to re rein that in uh, my years in commerce, I guess, um, I, I still am dealing with. But um, I, of the 70 channelers I've worked with, 22 of them have elected to take it to the public, about a third have. Uh, that's the biggest kick for me, I think. And uh, the second question was, again, please. What are your favorite questions to ask? Um, well, to ask the client or to ask the beings? Yes, either one. Okay. Well, usually with the beings, um, before we have a session with them, once we know we're channeling, um, the client and I formulate a few questions that I will ask. Um, some on behalf of the client, some are old standards I pull out. Because the important thing right now is not to get information so much, but just to get a dialogue going, get some back and forth conversation. Right. Uh, that just improves the connection. So I can ask questions I know the answers to, but uh, uh, still I usually get something further. Um, probably the, the best question I can ask is, um, what message would you like to give humanity at this time that perhaps I haven't asked? Right. I uh, just have one other question here. Um, mm -hmm. Just thinking says, is masculine feminine energy different from divine feminine or divine masculine energies? Is it possible to explain masculine feminine, uh, what these energies are? Um, the real answer is, I don't know. But let me speculate a little bit. I think uh, if I understood the question, it's... Um, What's the difference between male and female uh, energy and the difference between divine male and female energy? Right. Well, I think the, um, the former um, human male-female energy is divine. Um, so it's the same thing. But the difference between male and female energy, I think probably everybody in this conversation would have some input on that. I think we've all dealt with men and women. <laughs> We've got some ideas uh, about that. I don't think I have any particular expertise in that. Other than that, um, I think uh, as an observer, I, I can certainly state that the uh, genders are blending a little more. 
we see that in everyday life. Um, you know, women are taking on roles that men had, and men are taking on roles that women had. And, um, I think there's less distinction than there used to be. And maybe that's a reflection that we're all incorporating both energies. All right. Thank you so much. That's all the questions I have here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Wendy has a question. Go ahead, Wendy. Oh, thank you. Hi. How are you today? <laughs> I'm well, thanks. How are you, Wendy? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Um, I should have written my question down. I like had it and then I was listening to your conversation and got wrapped up in it. <laughs> Well, it happens to me all the time. When you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what it was. Um, how often do you run into beings that, as you're speaking to them, um, don't necessarily identify themselves? So, so in other words, you might say, well, who am I speaking with? And they're like, well, we don't really have a name to give you, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, there's a little of that. Um, I would say the majority are pretty clear about who they are. You know, they might say, I'm ascended master, Jesus. Uh, or right, right. Um, some of them, uh, well, certainly, um, yeah, I would say most of them really don't have names. They, they recognize each other by vibration. So some of them I would ask, uh, can you give us a name? And they say, oh, wait a minute. And um, they say, let us think about that. And we'll get back to you. Uh, and they usually do. Um, yeah. Now, some say spirit. And I say, well, come on, that's all. That's everybody. Uh, but you must be um, kind of an individuated aspect of the all. Or Yeah. How, how can we address you? Give us humans uh, some help here. Um, and uh, they will usually come back with something. But, um, yeah, not always right away. And. Uh, you know. Beautiful. Have you ever had anyone come to you with one expectation that maybe um, as you're working with channelers that they're thinking they're connecting with one being and then after working with you, they discover it's a different being entire in its entirety? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, I, I guess uh, in, in various ways that happens, Wendy. I think um, people say, I want to channel ascended masters and up sort of thing yeah well uh, let's uh walk before we run uh, so uh maybe start with your higher self or uh, a palladian or andromeda someone like that who's vibrationally a little closer to a human and, and you don't have to stretch as far but certainly people uh start out maybe with one being and pretty quickly get into a bunch of others you know, Karen Ashby is a good example. It's too bad she's not here today, but uh, uh, she started out with the Palladians, and now she brings in Arcturians, dragons, trees, uh, elephants, all, all kinds of Very, very exciting. Yes. Yeah. I... And I think a lot of channelers can do that on purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, they can uh, say, I would like to hear from a being who's a specialist in healing. Right. Uh, and they're, they're out there, they're specialists in business, in money. <laughs> um, there's a group, uh, Susan James channel, uh, the first group she channeled were a bunch of uh, military people. Uh, they went oh. by the name Soldier, but now she's into Ascended Masters and uh, sourcing. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think Karen mentioned that many of us are working on our channeling, and, and I'm definitely one of them. Um, our, our channel is kind of a group, so I would be interested in, well, at the end, you know, I'm sure Karen's going to send and share all of your information. So, um, so I look forward to, um, reaching out to you and in, in making yeah. additional connections. So yeah. thank you okay. so much. I'm, I'm enjoying your conversation. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, when, one of the things you were saying about <clears throat> when she was asking about, uh, beings having names, I know that I never asked Theos, uh, what their name was until much later. And they actually said, do you, do you want to know our name? Because they were encouraging, because they first asked me, do you want a channel? And I, and I was like, no, why, why would I do that? That was my thing. I've, I can talk to you directly, but they said, well, this isn't about you talking to us. It's about us talking. 
through you. And and then they said, do you want to know our name? And like I had said, I never thought to even ask them for a name. And then they gave me a name, which they implicitly uh, said, we chose this name for you, mm -hmm. which goes along with the, you know, with what you had said that they don't really have names there because it's from what I understand, three beings that I'm channeling, um, they're not all, they're not called Theos. They're not walking around with a name tag that says Theos on them. That's the name of the group that they've given me yeah. to, for me, for my identification. Yeah, Do if you find... Robin Jelinek here and uh, yeah. Robin channels Athena, well, there is one being who's a spokesperson for a group of, is it 10 or seven or something? Right. Um, right. And uh, she is presenting kind of a consensus of that group under mm -hmm. the name Athena. Right. And, uh, that's pretty typical of quite a few. Yeah. Yeah, do you, what do you find about that? I mean, because that is the finding that as as you go up higher in vibration, there tends to be collectives or groups that are there with sort of a group mind or a consensual mind. Do you find that to be true kind of across the board? And at what dimension do you think that that really begins? Do you have, have well, you ever considered that? Yeah, I think it kind of begins right away. Um, Karen Ashby's first... Um, encounter was with the Palladians as a group of four mm -hmm. and uh, Roger, Ellie, Violet and Fred. <laughs> um, they had been human before, they knew us and they were kind of door openers in a sense and mm -hmm. Fred was a spokesperson. I see. And um, pretty quickly after Karen got on a roll, you might say, they departed and they're off channeling with other people and getting balls rolling with them, I guess. And uh, these days, uh, Karen will be channeling the Palladians and uh, we might get the message, oh, Roger is here. And uh, we said, oh, hi, Roger. And uh, Roger apparently was an in, uh, a being uh, in Northern Newfoundland at one time as a human. And uh, he's a character, but um, he presents an image these days of a Scotsman in a kilt, and he does a little dance for us. Do you remember, or do you, have you ever followed Jay-Z Knight and Ramtha? Do you remember Jay-Z Knight and Ramtha? No. Which is one of the, that was a channeler that was one of the first that was actually um, on television, presented as uh, as a, and she she was always Ramtha was embodying her and she would do these sort of uh, warrior kind of stances mm -hmm. and everything and it, it, there was a point apparently like where she stopped channeling but then she continued to uh, embody Ramtha and bring messages and it kind of got a little culty there but there was she was one of the first but do you find the reason i'm asking that question is do you find because that doesn't really happen with me theos is not uh a, so much a personality say even as a bashar is where they have you know isms that you would really do but do you find that or if you've ever seen daniel scranton channel i don't know if you know daniel but he he's he does a lot of and it's it started for him very spontaneously. He lifts his arms and he does a lot of arm motions and mm -hmm. it's quite animated in his channeling. But do you find that there's a you know a lot of people are taking on sort of these other uh, yes personality it, types? There yeah. is a range. Uh, there's people like yourself who um, just appear to be like the human uh, mm -hmm. but then there's um, those who do seem to be embodied they they get very animated they right. uh, look a little different uh mm -hmm. there was one that was kind of comical uh, you may have heard of the mantis people sure and, uh, you know one of the in the early stages of somebody channeling i usually ask um, from the perspective of the being if the connection could be a hundred percent what is it now and they might mm. say something like 30%. Mm. And so well, what would it take to get it to 100? Well, it might be a dietary change. It might be exercise. It might be just practice. Um, more grounding. Uh, there's a few things, perhaps. But one of them, um, I was saying, you seem to be having trouble coming through today. Uh, what's going on? And he said, well, she's got two legs and I've got six. 
And I guess somehow, I don't understand it, that he was trying to fit his body in some maybe spiritual way into yeah. hers. We There's a, a Jim Charles channels, a very endearing uh, being called Grendel, and he has a tail. And mm-hmm. when he's coming through, it's always, his comment is always about getting his tail, you know, making sure that the tail is coming in. And it, it, it does, there's always this sort of very grunty, uh, groany kind of mm-hmm. creaky sound of, of him coming in. And, and he's very distinguished in the way that he speaks and, and his manners and, you know, much more uh, than, than any of the other beings that are channeled by Jim. But Grendel is such a character that he, he his, it's always about his tail and it's always like, wait, wait, I'm, I'm coming in, wait, just <laughs> hold on, you know, and he's very funny. And he, and he exits, he, he was a reptilian who uh, has worked uh, with many political He's done a lot of walk-ins and he's worked with a lot of mm-hmm. political people, but he, you know, he, when he first came in, he wasn't such a fan of humans, but they sort of mm-hmm. won him over, even though people within his, or beings within his own group are not like the biggest fans, but he's, he definitely loves humans to his own dismay, you know, mm-hmm. and which is always very funny. So, yeah, I, I, I recognize that a lot. A bit it of was an another aside, uh, but just <laughs> on a theme a little bit, um, Apparently, the insects that we have on planet Earth are scaled down replicas of civilizations elsewhere. Mm. That, that's so. always been a question that a lot of people in this group have had about these these insects. I, I would say that it's true. But do they yeah. have the consciousness that that those uh, those beings on other planets? I mean, are they little? I mean, the reason I ask that is because there was a there's a it was a physicist and and. Uh, no, he's a mathematician and he speculated, he'd been, he'd been a high, high level physics level mathematician. And he speculated that uh, if, if beings were actually here, if aliens were on the planet, that the thing that they wouldn't be was maybe walking around, but they would be very small in the form of insects and, and other kind of things that would be innocuous to the human eye, but that they, they could be in a very good position to observe and to explore the planet without any kind of, um, detectability do do you find that well i uh, think there's a a couple of aspects there are um, ets who Mm -hmm. um, have an et soul you know they Mm -hmm. spend most of their life say on arcturus but this time they've incarnated as a human so they have a human form they're human but they're really an arcturian Mm -hmm. you know so there's that Um, as to the level of consciousness of um, insects um, I don't know, but I know that it can be quite different. Uh, for example, the consciousness of um, a hive is a collective that's all one mind. Right. And I've had comments from such uh, a group that says, uh, I don't know how you humans do it. Everybody's got a different opinion. And, uh, you know, <laughs> there's a thousand people, all of a thousand ideas. We don't operate that way. We just all come together and we do this thing we agree on. Um, but the idea of consensus between individual humans, I mean, people can't even agree, you know. Yeah. I mean, do you, can you imagine trying to come to a consensus with all humans about even what the color, you know, periwinkle is? I mean, how many yeah. people, you know, how long would that take? And the fact that these these beings are to such a level where it's instantaneous. They, they only speak as one. They don't even, are they having even individual thoughts or are they so interconnected that they only have the one thought? And is there a differentiation between that? That would be, yeah. yeah. So is it a higher consciousness or is it a lower consciousness? I don't know, but it's a different one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a good point. Is it lower consciousness? The in, The inability to to think individually, because I I know one of the things that I channeled, as well as one of the things that is evidence uh, in Hinduism. And one of the reasons that I was drawn to Hinduism is because so much of the stuff that I intuited, you know, especially as a young child, I found written in Hinduism Mm -hmm. later, much, much later. And of course, truth is truth. But I just found that the verbiage and the the way of describing matched what I already 
knew within myself. And one of the things that I had channeled was that as a human, our gift is individual focus, that we have this mm -hmm. ability to focus, you know, individually and not in oneness. The, the duality that we're able to experience by having two eyes that, you know, go through a brain and deal with an ego are the things that make us have the unique experience. And if you are a unique, if you are a hive mind, you aren't having that individual mm -hmm. experience. And that was the very reason for incarnation into a body. Mm -hmm. That that is actually a, quite a gift to have this, because if we were conscious of everything all at once, then we wouldn't be able to focus uh, you know, individually. I don't know if you have any thoughts about that, but I like the idea maybe that some of the hive minds might be lower consciousness in the fact of the non-individual experience, not any less, but like you said, maybe equal, but different as opposed mm -hmm. to higher versus lower in a hierarchical sense. Yeah. Angels, for example, don't easily fit into our scheme of levels of consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, I've repeatedly asked a couple of them, uh, can you relate in any way to 5D, 6D, that kind of thing? And they say, no, it's just all a uh, spectrum of consciousness. And I uh, can't pin them down on that one. Do, what do you find that with, with interacting with angels, what has been the, the most, like that one thing that you just said, but what has been the thing that you find unique about angels versus um, other beings? Yeah, uh, there is a thing, and I don't know that I've got my mind around exactly what it is or can even describe the confusion that I have about it. Um, I always thought an angel was a separate entity. You know, there's me, there's my angel. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm getting and beginning to, I think, understand is that the more we are in touch with our soul or our inner self, the more there is an expression of ourself that we might call an angel. Right. Now, I've tried to pin them down on things like, okay, you guys are supposed to be guardian angels. You're here to protect us. How do you do that? And, uh, you know, if I'm driving my car off a cliff, can you catch it and put it back on the road? Um, <laughs> well, um, apparently, with the agreement of the soul, they can call upon a higher entity or higher realms. And in exceptional cases, that could happen. But mostly... They only operate in conjunction with the wishes of the soul. And they may do it by planting suggestions or thoughts in our minds. Mm -hmm. You know, bring an umbrella. Don't go there. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. No explanation. You know, it's going to rain and the forecast is it. just bring an umbrella. <laughs> right. Um, so um, I guess um, I'm not really addressing your question very well but um and i'm going to well do you think our it. angels are guardian angels or us see yeah, this I is why this, i think yeah, they are a projection of us yeah i do too and, I, and i'll tell you why mm -hmm. when i was uh about i was in my early 20s because i was bartending but i i was still in college because of, I knew where I lived and there was a moment where I was driving home and I hadn't been working, but it was late and I was driving home and I was, I had to cross this bridge to go back to where I lived. I live in Charleston, South Carolina, and I had to go across the Cooper river bridge to, to Mount Pleasant, which is where I was living. And there's a place where you go to take the exit off the main road and it kind of curves around and then it goes up curve and then it goes up to the bridge. And as I took the exit, I heard slow down and I wasn't going <laughs> fast, but I just heard just slow down. And then I thought, okay. And, and it, there was no resistance in what I was hearing. And I, it wasn't like I was questioning what was going on. And it was in just this very voice, like I'm using slow down. And I was like, okay. So I slowed, slowed down. And, it, and then I heard slow way down, like five miles per hour. And so I was, I watched my odometer go down to five miles an hour, which is very slow. 
And then there was a moment where, as I took the exit, the median, uh, I'm going to mute Safira because her, her thing's on, um, that the median was very wide at that point. As I came around the curve to my right, the median was very wide. And I heard, just pull over into the median. And so I just, with again, without resistance, I just said, okay. And I pulled over to the median. And then I heard, stop. And I just, it was, it was so, I, I, I didn't question it. I didn't, it didn't seem strange. It seemed kind of fun, you know, in the moment. So I just stopped. And at the very moment my car came to a stop, and I've told this story several times, a car being chased by a thief coming the wrong way <laughs> down this exit went flying past me. Wow. And my reaction was, huh. I know that's something. And mm. then I just pulled back yeah. out and went on home. And it took me, you know, getting almost home, which was about 15 minutes from there to really conceive of what had just happened. And it wasn't until years later, I heard that was you coming to you to save you. It mm. And because people were like, that's an angel. And I thought, well, is it? And in a way it was an angelic kind of, you know, saving, but who, who was, who was really the angel? Was it my guardian angel, which would be, who was better to guard you than you, you mm -hmm. know? So, I, I mean, that, that's just an experience I had. And that's when I came to that conclusion that the guardian angel that comes in and jumps in and, you know, who knows precisely what's going to happen is, is you uh, on some other, whether it's a future you or a time traveling you or a whatever. That is beginning to sink into my consciousness. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm challenged with, uh, I do a newsletter each month and uh, usually head it up with an article one sort or another. And uh, the March one is going to be about an angel or what is an angel sort of thing. Mm. So yeah. I, you know, but bottom line, uh, they evolve as we evolve. Right. And if we're, you know, low vibrating 3D and uh, haven't woken up to very much at all, um, the angel is not going to evolve very much until there is an awakening. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I started out from a different vantage point altogether. I had a separate entity, like, um, you know, an ascended master. Now I'm thinking the next month I'm going to write about archangels and there's a couple of channelers who deal with them. And uh, mm -hmm. Uh, that'll be interesting. <laughs> that'll they, be interesting. they roam the omniverse. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Suzanne has a follow-up question. She, uh, I'll just ask it for time. Um, actually, Joan has a question. Let me, let me go to because Joan asked a question earlier. Suzanne, said, let's let's go to Safira because she hasn't asked a question, and then we'll come back to the other two. Safira, go ahead. Ask your question. Oh, thank you, Karen. Hello, Peter. I, I, did, I did hear the beginning of your of your talking today and then I had to leave and come back. So my apologies. And maybe somebody has answered, asked my question already. Um, some people can't be hypnotized. Is that true? I feel yes. like I'm one of those people. So <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a few tricks that uh, might catch you, but um, there's probably about three to 5% of people, uh, the research shows anyway, that, that will not allow themselves to be hypnotized. Mm. It's, it's usually uh, they're in, into control quite a bit and they just can't let it go. So you, yeah. know, you have to to some degree uh, allow, uh, but there's a couple of tricks that uh, get some of the hardcore ones. So uh, you, might, <laughs> you might be successful. <laughs> yes, I need some of those tricks. So actually I do channeling and I have also been a guest on this this uh, forum before. Uh, what happens right before, at least probably about a week before, <laughs> is that I panic. I panic, I panic, I panic, even right before I'm like panic. And then uh, also the letting go part. So um, I would love to get to that level. But here's another thing I'm wondering. Um, <clears throat> some people, a lot of people can channel, as you know. Uh, some people, in my opinion, are quote-unquote channelers. They come to do this work, like Jim Charles. 
who is one of our, our main, who is our main channeler here and who started this whole thing. Um, he is, he was meant to channel as opposed to many people who do channel. I think you know what I mean, right, about that? Or no? Well, there's probably d degrees of that. You yeah. Know, uh, you wouldn't be channeling if you weren't meant to. Yes, but uh, uh, no, that's true. I just think, um, for example, I feel like I don't have enough love for humanity. Uh, I'm more afraid of humans. <laughs> I don't have enough love to to be motivated enough to do anything I can to do to be a channeler, even though I feel like I always feel good when I do it. And I feel love from the beings. I feel peace after. I mean, it's it's wonderful, but it's not motivating enough to do anything I can to get through it. And I think that has to do with my, um, I don't have enough love. I don't know if you observe that in the people that you've trained for channeling. Uh, if you have some of them who have such a deep love for humanity that they really, really want to do it. Like, so you said you asked them, why do they want to, right? What was the most compelling answer that you got? Did it have to do with that, with, with loving people? Uh, not necessarily, and I would say don't beat yourself up because you don't want to do this for the public. Uh, you don't have to. You can do it for your own spiritual development. Uh, right, that right. Could be, that could be enough. Um, as I said, <laughs> two-thirds of the people I deal with uh, have not taken it to the public. Uh, some of them are working on it, and a few of them right. are doing it for yeah. close friends and maybe family, trusted people, but... Uh, no, you don't have to take this to the public and still you're shining your light um, to others. Uh, you're getting a little smarter yourself. Um, you're going along the path and it might be just the perfect path for you at, uh, at that time. So I, I wouldn't be too judgmental about it. But uh, yeah, there are a lot of people that um, show up uh, with me and uh, say, yeah, I'd like to take it to the public. Others say, no, I just uh, feel it's something I can do for my own development. Mm -hmm. I no, I understand. It. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I have been, I have taken it to the public and then, and then I backed off. Uh, partly mm -hmm. because the people watching were also very critical and, and harsh. And that's like, okay, forget it. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. so I, don't, I don't have a tough enough skin, in other words, I think. Uh, you know, you don't have to be tough. Uh, you have to choose your audience sometimes. Uh, you know, start with your close friends who um, would be understanding. Uh, yeah. Meet with other channelers. Uh, that, that's one of the things I do um, with uh -huh. the channelers. Um, I have a, what I call the buddies list, and they can contact each other. They can channel with each other, uh, practice, or uh, just uh, talk about... Um, you know, is it me? Is it them? Um, you know, right, how do you right. deal with the um, So, um, no, I understand. I understand. I've done that online. Thank you. That is a but, good idea. Uh, but yeah. pick your audience, and um, you know, you don't have to be argumentative with anybody. You know, if somebody right. says, "I don't believe that," you can tell them, "Well, you probably don't have any reason to believe it." So, uh, you know, believe what you like. Uh, I'm just yeah. presenting an option here, and. Um, if it uh, works for you, it's fine. If it doesn't, find something yes. else. Thank you so much. And um, how many emails do you get so that you can, like, how long does it take if I would write you to get any kind of answer about? Uh, you... I, I'm pretty quick at um, getting rid of the junk and getting to the... Very good. It depends on the day. Uh, All right. Thank you. Know, you. I will uh, write you. Yeah. Okay, please do. Uh, email is the best way to get me. Uh, yes. Um, I'll get All back right. the same, same day or if not, uh, certainly in the next day or two. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Karen. No problem. Thank you. Um, Suzanne had a question. Do you want to ask it, Suzanne, about the insectoids or not? She's still Hi. Um, oh, she well, actually, it could refer to any, maybe any beings. Uh, entities that you've encountered, but have you ever run into any tricksters? For example, <laughs> I think of the insectoids sometimes as being tricksters. Well, not to my knowledge. Okay. Uh, you know, there could be somebody 
throwing a curveball every once in a while, but um, I've never caught anybody out at it. Um, I did mention earlier, and perhaps you weren't uh, here, Suzanne, at the time, that uh, there were two instances of where a couple curious uh, interlopers <laughs> dropped in just to check things out. But uh, other than that, if there was a trickster, I didn't know it. Okay. And I kind of doubt there was. Uh, you know, because stepping back from each channeler, I can say that uh, it's been beneficial to me. It's been beneficial to the channeler. It's been beneficial to probably people around that individual. Um, it's all been good stuff. So if there's any tricking going on, that's um, not apparent to me. Okay, thank you. Wouldn't that have to do with the uh, only love and light kind of uh... Uh, border or boundary that you put on uh, who can come through and that trust that Archangel Michael is facilitating that type of interaction with beings. Mm -hmm. You think that that's the case? Yeah. Um, yes, I, I think it is. Um, although, you know, the stories of dark entities and that sort of thing, I'm sure are somewhat amplified. You know, they're fear-based and they, they do tend to be amplified. I don't think they're as prevalent as we sometimes hear they are. Uh, we do hear some horror stories that have afflicted some individuals, but they're probably a special case with special <laughs> reasons and such. Right, perfect. Um, Joan asks, she says, are, are those that are hypnotized Conscious, is that right? Is, is, and she wants to know what's the benefit of being hypnotized? I think the benefit of being hypnotized is that you relax very deeply and your mind kind of slows down and gets out of the way. But yes, the people are conscious. It's like you being in a meditative state. You're aware of what's going on around you. Your eyes are closed, so you're not visually aware, but uh, you're aware of noises. You're aware of my voice. As a matter of fact, I suggest in hypnosis that the only sound you have any interest in is the sound of my voice. And as long as I keep talking, you keep hearing, and you stay in this relaxed state. So, um, yeah, there, there are the myths that uh, you see in the movies and such that uh, people are zonked and not aware of what's happening, but no, that's not the case with me. I could probably uh, suggest to a very suggestible person that you're not going to recall anything from this session or that your mind is just going to go blank until I snap my finger. Um, you know, but normally, no, you're fully aware. Just a little dozy. As far as what, with what? Uh, you're just a little dozy. You know, the unconscious part of the mind comes to the fore and you become more receptive and more responsive to suggestion. And your analytical, critical mind steps away. And that, that's the role that I play. I, I'm still in the conscious mind, so I can be analytical. I can respond to your responses. Um, but you are just a little uh, sleepy, sort of. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a question because you mentioned uh, you have a friend that's a BA. You you said you have a friend that's fifth dimensional. Are they incarnated that you know them? Or is that some being that's been channeled that you are now, you have a rapport with and you consider a friend? You mentioned oh, earlier. Uh, yeah, I met him. I uh, actually met his wife first. Um, yeah, he's here on earth. He's a Canadian citizen, uh, born in Mexico, and he's in Mexico right now. Um, yeah, um, my understanding is that at the fifth dimension, we no longer require bodies for the lessons we need to learn. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so we don't have them for the most part. But there's a lot of individuals in the fifth dimension who do have bodies um, for two reasons. One, they have maybe some unfinished business in 3D to resolve. Or in some cases, they may choose to take on a body. I met an, an, an Andromedan one time, her name was Ovita, and uh, I said, are you physical or spiritual? And she said, well, I can be either. And I said, well, what are you most of the time? She says, I prefer physical. 
And the Palladians looked at her one time and said, yeah, she's gorgeous. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine, I mean, if you, if you kind of know the game of being human and you know your eternal, you can really have a lot of beautiful fun or mm -hmm. naughty fun or, you know, real, <laughs> yeah. you know, experiences without, um, I mean, hopefully your motivation is higher. Um, yes, but you know you hope you know you don't just have a lot of people driving around humans just you know wreaking wreaking havoc. But that that also could be uh, something if they have the consciousness of of themselves. But then it would seem that they wouldn't be a higher being, would they? <laughs> well, not like necessarily. Uh, no, yeah. we're here to play and to experiment. Yeah, yeah, uh, and to gain new experiences, uh, which contribute to the collective. Right. Um, so yeah. You know, I think the only rule is just don't violate anybody else. Otherwise, yeah, uh, yeah not even. Well, that's sure. what I mean. The, the violent, I meant violation would be, would kind of knock you down in your vibration yeah. a little bit. Yeah. 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 Wendy has a question. This will be, uh, unless someone else has a question, this will probably be the last question that we'll take. So if you have a question, get it in quick. Okay. So, okay. So I'm wondering about, um, when you've worked with any of your clients, if they've ever talked, especially with the galactic beings, um, if they've ever talked to you about, uh, giving out or, um, codes or activations. And this is because you're saying that a lot of times you're asking if they have a message for humanity. So I'm wondering if that has been something that you've come across. Um, short answer is no. However, uh, my fifth dimension friend has uh, generated a lot of activations. And um, if you listen to them, I guess it frees up some blockages. Um, no, I, yeah, there may be, but I can't put my finger on any right now. Okay. I think, so. I, I think it's because some of the work that I do is more toward the healing end. And a lot of times that mm -hmm. kind of conversation ends up coming up, but it generates from their, you know, the higher being that's kind of being channeled through them. But, um, yes. but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to work with you. And, and yeah, we, and actually we're like, I say we, because we're our group of friends who are part of this too, that we have our, our channel, you know, the channeled illuminations. And mm -hmm. so different people are giving messages in that, but, um, but definitely looking to build out on that. Um, so yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. I think lurking behind all of this, um, you know, having experiences and experimenting that sort of thing, it, there should be a sense of fun, you know, yeah. playfulness, playfulness. And, um, many of the beings reflect that, uh, some are not, some are pretty splockish, you know, <laughs> they ask a question, you get an answer, what's next, uh, that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, I think we're encouraged to, you know, Earth was, I, I, as I understand it, originally set up as a playground for lots of civilizations. And uh, we've lost sight of that. But uh, yeah, look for those opportunities. Yeah, to play I, I definitely play. think it's something worth exploring because, um, you know, I think many of us when we're working with, you know, the quantum field and metaphysical things, or we've had experiences since children, um, I know I had a, uh, I almost died and had a Pleiadian um, kind of merge with me. So mm -hmm. I've had those experiences like a little, like something more throughout my life. And so it leads me to exploring many different things. And I agree with what you were saying earlier about the elementals, that that's usually a step backwards. Uh, Dolores Cannon has a book um, between life and death. And she actually talks about that you start often many beings or souls will start as elemental and then they'll move into human. So from, you know, from the different people that she's worked with is kind of what she's talking about in that particular um, piece of literature. Um, and so when you were saying that, I was like, yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying too, or hearing rather, or reading about too. And then they're saying that that doesn't mean they can't go backwards, but usually if they do, it's not really going backwards, but you know what I mean, the reference yeah. Um, yeah. to a more simplistic, I don't want to use the word simplistic being either, but an earlier, maybe an earlier version of the human being is a, is a being to, to Good incarnate being. into. Yeah, just yeah. to experience something they hadn't before, or maybe to contribute to the collective in some novel way. I noticed Karen Joy has just joined us. And, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. We're, we're mm-hmm. actually coming to the last question. I want to, Wendy, I want to let Angie ask okay, the question. No worries. She hasn't asked Thank one you. Yet. And that's uh, all. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Angie. Ask your question and welcome, Karen. You um, came in question, a it's just, yes, it's just a quick uh, question. You were saying um, uh, that, you know, uh, you take everybody into the hypnosis state. And a lot of the questions, do you have questions for humanity or do you have information? So you've gained a lot of information and um, have you written it down? Have you, is it in a book of some of the more fascinating um, responses that you've gotten back? Yeah. Um, After the first five channelers, I thought that was maybe pushing it. That would be maybe the limit. Uh, I did write a book. It's called Hypnosis and uh, Channeling. Um, Subtitle something about enlightenment. It's funny, when you write a book, you forget about it pretty quickly and forget what's in it. Also, when you write a book, um, it's kind of your understanding of things at that point in time. And uh, I would say I've probably had 500 conversations with beings since that book. So these days I'm writing articles in my newsletter and uh, that may bundle up into a book one day, but book's a lot of work, and I'm not sure I'm ready for it again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can uh, you can get a lot of the concepts of consciousness and things like that uh, from that little book. So it's on Audible, it's on Amazon, and uh, you can see more about it on my website if you go to the store. But you have to order it through Amazon. Perfect. Thank you so much. So just because people are asking and uh, um, they would like to know how to contact you, we'll put your bio and everything in the description, but maybe you can uh, tell everybody now how they can contact you and and, and reach out to you if oh, they would like that. to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my domain name is Peter H. Dennis, uh, two ends and Dennis. Uh, .com. So that'll get you my website. And my email address is peter at peterhdennis.com. If you're from the States, uh, email is a better way to get me. My phone plan doesn't extend to the outside of Canada. And uh, yeah, I guess that that is really it. Um, My website tells you about facilitation. It features some of the channelers who have gone public and uh, tells you how to subscribe to the newsletter and how to order the book. So that's pretty much it. Perfect. So, yeah, that's great. So Peter H. Peter at PeterHDennis.com and your website is PeterHDennis.com. Do you have, do you do workshops as a group or do individual uh, um, we've done a few uh, prior to COVID. Um, there were a few channelers and myself. We would rent some space and do it. Um, right. I, yeah, this. I'm glad you asked this, uh, Karen, because uh, the second Sunday of every month, I have a guest channeler on. Okay. And uh, at 2 o'clock, uh, my newsletter gives you the link. And you can get past newsletters by going to the newsletter section of my website. The link is in there. It's a Zoom link. And uh, so the next one is the 12th. And uh, I think it's Juliet Bowen, who's uh, my guest Chandler. Uh, we usually have uh, an audience, uh, much like your own, and uh, people ask questions. I referee. And uh, yeah, they're all fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, Peter, this has been a really, I, I think, very interesting conversation because we've never actually had someone on that does what you do in the way that you do it. And uh, it's been it's been really wonderful to hear your insights and your experiences and also your um, overview of what channeling is and and what you've discovered because it's 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 so organic the way that it seems to have happened and that you've just sort of followed your your own joy and and trying to um give you know it, it's it's one thing to do it as a as a channel but it's another thing to you know be able to I don't want to say birth because you're you're not birthing but in a way you are just birthing the the uh the the channelers into the world and helping them 
come forward. So that's, it's a really, really inspiring and beautiful thing. So thank you so much for being here and, and sharing your, sharing your work with us. Well, thank you very much, Karen. It's been fun. As a matter of fact, I think following what Wendy was talking about, uh, it isn't fun. Uh, let's do something else. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, right. And I would say to uh, those of you who are channeling, if you would like to join me in the sense that, uh, first of all, my meter will not be running if you're a channeler. <laughs> uh, there's no charge for this. But I can uh, include you in my network of channelers so that you uh, can join. We have uh, an interest group that does healing. We have another one that does facilitation. Uh, we've had different meetings. But we also have a buddies list where you can talk to other channelers. And uh, I think that's really important for each channeler to just exchange with others. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's available. But if you're a non-channeler and you want to give it a try, uh, yeah, my price uh, structure is on my website. Okay. Well, exchange is important, especially for the time offered. So I don't think there's any problem with that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Karen. And uh, thanks <laughs> to your audience. Uh, they, they've been great. Uh, you know, some questions have really opened up a lot of uh, information. Perfect. All right. Is there any last uh, thing that you would like to share? Any something that we didn't cover or talk about that there's that you would like to uh, express? You know, we covered a lot of ground. Uh, <laughs> we did, I yeah. can't really think of anything except that okay. we just uh, maybe emphasize that um, you know, we don't have to take this all that seriously. You know, keep it light. Uh, have some fun with it. Play with it. And um, that will keep the vibration high and it will allow it to happen more and better. So, um, yeah, relax with it and uh, have some fun. All right. Well, thank you so very much. Um, we generally end with a blessing. If, if we ask, maybe you would want to give the blessing as we go out. Um, if that's something you would feel comfortable doing. If not, we will pull from our normal group. But I always like to give someone the opportunity to, to give a blessing. Well, thank you. Um, light language is something I've encountered. And I mm. can utter sounds that sound like it, but I have no clue what I'm doing or saying. Right. Um, but I think just by way of parting, um, realizing that we are all one. You know, it's like there's a fire and we're all sparks of that fire. It's the same stuff. And uh, we're here to have experience. We're here to take that experience back to the collective and uh, just you know, keep evolving that way. So I guess um, my last thought would be one of gratitude and uh, gratitude to you, Karen, for doing this, for the audience, for being here, for the beings who I'm sure were listening in and, um, and probably prompting me anyway and maybe others um, with um, comments or whatever. So just a thank you to all and uh, many blessings to everyone. Thank you so much. What a beautiful way to end. So thank you all. And next week, Jim will be back and we will pick it up there. Please visit uh, Peter's website. It's peterhdennis.com. And if you want like to email him, it's peter at peterhdennis.com. So thank you so very much, Peter. It was so very lovely. Nice, nice, uh, different webinar for us, which I think is sometimes really uh, refreshing and important. So again, much, much love to you and greatest appreciation and gratitude for the work you're doing. And I wish you continued uh, fun experiences in doing it. Thank you very much, Karen. Thank you. Okay. Thank Bye you, everyone. Bye-bye. And I'm going to end the webinar. Bye, everybody. <laughs>